ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things rpg maker if you're not subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button to be updated every time i release a new video by also hitting that bell notification icon you would then be notified we pretty much do all things rpg maker in this video we're going to be discussing how to make a huge open world map such as this one that you see this is a massive in my opinion massive but well, this is 500 by 400 map so there's a couple of things i do beforehand and there was a couple of techniques i was using before and some stuff i changed up now that you know we're going to be talking about so let me see exactly good place to start okay so if i show you the current map let's jump back to the let's jump back to Give me one second. One second, one second. Here we go. All right. So, pretty much, this is the, f not the first, but this is the first iteration of the map, of the Dawnhaven map. As you can see, it's pretty much almost the same. It's just a lot more details is added on. So, what I like to do when I make my, my maps, first I decide exactly how big do I want that map to be. So let's say I was making the 500 by 500 world map, right? First I would make the map, then I will come up here where it says tools, options, right? And then what you need to do is decide what size map are you comfortable working with? The smaller you make these numbers, the more maps you're gonna have to work on individually. But again, like I said, it's really how comfortable you are. Me personally, I'm comfortable building 50 by 50 maps. That's why I had the map divi divided out by 50 by 50. So if we back into the old Dawnhaven map, well, you could still see the new map. If you look at all the little pieces, you will see that they're all in 50 by 50 tiles, right? So even the the main well not the main town the the center town hollow tip it's a 100 by 50 map and as you can see it's divided right in the middle so I made these two maps separately and then I combined it and I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that so first thing you do make your map however big you want secondly divide it into the pieces that you feel more comfortable working with right more recently what I've learned to do so let's go ahead and change this from field to exterior. So what I've learned to do is before actually zooming in and working out the maps, I would draw the outline of my map first. Right? So let's say this is the type of map I want to make. So island over here. Maybe let's make that bigger. Let's make sure all these points are closed. Right? Make sure all these points are closed. Right? Maybe let's say more over here. Right? So, and then, ooh, no, we need some water, of course, then maybe zoom in, or zoom out, zoom out some more, and then have your waterways, because you know, you're going to need some water, maybe there's a lake right here, fill that in with water. So this is what I've learned to do in more recent times. And I'll also show you what I did in the past. Now they're both valid ways to work. I just find that this gives you like more of a starting point. So you shape out your world first. So let's kind of make this river more rivery. And of course, we're not gonna actually be making the whole map, but I'll, I'll show you exactly what I do. And through the, you know, repeating this process, you'll be able to get the map that you want, right? So it doesn't matter where, anywhere in the world pick a point that you want to start first right 
So let's say I want to start right here, right? So what I would do is I would zoom in, get my 50-50 Baron, and then I will copy the whole map, right? Make a new map underneath this, 50 by 50, right? Name it whatever you want, field one, I guess. You don't really have to display it. Paste this here, right? So now you know what the edges are. You know how the edges are. And looking back here, you know there's stuff over here, there's stuff over here, there's stuff over here that you need to account for. You don't really need to account for much of the stuff over here, but you also do. So, and I'll, again, show you what I mean by that because I'm better with showing you than telling you. Also, let's go ahead and change this to this, this, make it the same, right? So, let's say I want to have a path here going this way, right? Maybe have some of these over here. Why not? Let's just have this here. So I'm just trying to make a quick map, maybe get some of this here, more of these over here. Make sure we close it up with these. Okay, just like that. Put some of that, some of this. All right, yeah, we're almost done here. Just put some of this, put some of this, put some of this, put some of this, put some of this. Now, again, when you first start your map, you could, you could do it layer by layer. You don't have to do everything at once because when you try to do everything at once, you might get overwhelmed and you might give up. Trust me, they were, oop, I hit my mic. But trust me, there's been a lot of times where I tried to do everything at once and I got overwhelmed. First, start by getting the shape of your world first. If that takes you two hours, spend the two hours and get the shape of your world first, right? And then after that, go back in and start putting in some of the details. You don't have to put all the details, right? But put in most of the details. So I have a path here. I know there's another way you could probably go this way. So let's, let's bring in another path this way and another path this way. You could go this way, but let's pretend there's another one of these here, right? So you can't really go that way. Right? Cool, 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 cool. Come back over here. Let's put this here. Put this here, put this here, put this. Okay. Let's move on. So you have all your details. Let me just make the map look decent. Make it look not the best, but something you can look at and be like okay i know i know exactly what, ooh, this is not <laughs> this is not this is not mv i forgot so i have to kind of not place everything together but you kind of get the gist of what i'm doing i'm just making my map regular right now here is what you do to make the map seamlessly flow like i said you could try to make these maps at the same time I was overwhelmed, you might be different, you might be a better person than me, but <clears throat> to not stress yourself out, to take it easy, right? After you're done, copy the map, paste it back in this spot, right? When you want to make this map, right, you copy everything and you make sure you include the little slither of the map before, right? So now your new map, the centerpiece will always be the one that's not, that doesn't overflow, right? But then after that, new map is going to be 51 by 50, right? Because we need that overflow because that's what's coming in from the, I keep forgetting to change that. Because that's what's coming in from the other map. So now I know the other map has this. So if I want... 
I can then continue this, right? Now, of course, like I said, you could do everything on one map. And you could be working on this section and then move into this section. But I feel like when you do it this way, each map is more unique because you're focused on each map differently. You're not looking at the whole big picture. The only part of the whole big picture you have is that little slither and it doesn't really help you that much. So it keeps your maps unique. And also, as long as you remember how the... I don't really want a path over there, so that's fine. I don't need to add that. But what I could do is put this here, like so. Then I could come over here, right here, put that here. Put this here, close this out. I'm not really trying to make this pretty, but let me see. You get the gist of everything I'm trying to tell you guys to do, right? Let's put this here, let's put this here, let's put this here, this here, this here, this here. Cool, just like that, right? Pull some more here, here, here. This is dark. Put it all around. Now you got your little unique, whatever that is, right? Players might try to figure it out. They might not try to figure it out. You might not use that, make that as a story point. Maybe that's a place where people do like a ritual at, or maybe aliens or, or something, something. But your maps are unique. And of course you can keep, well, that's pretty much what I did. And you keep flowing it into the next one and then the next one, and then the next one. And then slowly over time, now of course this one sucks compared to the first one I made, but it's that simple. The overlap. And you just continue working. And then after you have all your little pieces connected, you could delete them from here. That's fine, or you could keep them for references. And then, whenever you feel inspired, you could come back to an individual map. Now that you know how it all flows together, you could add in details, right? To both of the maps, to kind of make it, to give it more of a flowy feeling. Right? You could add more stuff later. So now let's say, for example, I want to work on this one. I will copy a slither of this over here, right? Go up, still 50 by 50. So I'll make a new map. 50 by 51, because the height is where we, we're getting the, the slip from, which is right there, right? Let me show, keep forgetting to change this. Right? And then we can, uh, these are here. We can say this goes here. This merges into this, this merges into this, and this merges into that. Right? And then we got mad trees, mad trees, mad trees, mad trees, mad trees, mad trees, mad trees. Mad trees, mad trees. This is the worst map ever. Okay, I know what to do. Let's put some bigger trees. Following this, following that, following this, following that, this. Ooh, no, not that. This, this. Pretty much, you get the gist of it. And you repeat this until all the map is filled up. Ooh, wow. That tree might not be in this tile. Yeah, it's not in this tile set. Not properly. This exterior. Change it to Dawnhaven. There we go. So yeah. And then, again, like I said, after the whole map is filled up, then you go in, you add more details. Let's say you decide later you want like a river or whatever over here. You could do that. So yeah, that's how I make my big open world maps. Section it off, it makes it easier, and then work on the sections separately. Again, you can come in here and work on it together, but I feel like it's a whole lot easier. So what I actually did for Dawnhaven, let me explain that to you guys real quick. So if we open up Dawnhaven over here, 
I, I can't remember which map it was that started with first, but I literally just, I, I believe this one will give you more of a, if I changed up how Hollow Tip looks. Let me see, minimize this. Go to remaps. Okay, well, I don't have that. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. But pretty much what I did for Don't Haven is I did not shape the world first, so I didn't know it was going to look like this, right? I literally just started with, I made the map, it was 500 by 500 originally. I started with one of the pieces, I filled it out, pasted it, went back to the piece next to it, filled that out, pasted it, and I continued until I have this map that I have today. And again, this map is still being changed always. I'm always adding details. Like for example, these hills over here, I just added these. These are new. This whole island that's in here, if you look at the version one, which is still not the version one, that island is, is not, if you look at the town and how they used to look, this is, actually yeah, this is how the town look, used to look. You see, this is the, the, the old town. This is what it used to look like. If you come over here, this is the old town over here, what it used to look like. This is the old one over here, as you can see. All these towns, if you look at them now, they're all, again, you don't have to start off trying to make everything. Just make your map look cool, right? Get the basics of everything you need to do. Get your game working. Then come back and always, you know, fix up your map. Especially if you're not, if you don't want to stress, if you're not really good at mapping or stuff like that, you can always find someone, someone to do your mapping later, or you can always replace your asset. But don't let, don't let that slow you down. Just get something that you can work on, start working on it, and you can always add on to it later. Testimony of that is, you see how it used to look from this and this to this and this. Not that it's any better. But, well, I think so. Like, for example, this this used to be the old Mages Guild. And now look at how it looks. See? The water is still even the same. I just, you know, added some extra stuff. And then back here, there wasn't anything back here. I added back here because I needed more locations for my story quest. I, I ran out of locations that I could use, so I started adding more locations. And that's how that came about. And I added this too because, again, I needed places for my bandits and stuff. But yeah, so map over time until the day that the game is 100% ready. You could always change your map. But yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to interior maps because I think that's the second point of the video. Creating dungeons and large interiors for buildings. Now that I handle a little bit differently. But usually for my interiors though, I'm good with this. Usually for my interiors, I don't really make them too big. Like let's say I, I want to make a huge dungeon. It's better to split it off into different rooms, even though I don't believe I use really. Mm, what I say, I use that philosophy. Ah, well, I usually make them 100 by 100 max, and I try not to make them too big. But if you're going to make huge dungeons, right, you have to be able to not use up all the space. So this is a 100 by 100 map. If you actually look at how much of the space is usable, I believe it's it's more space not used than used. You have to make them more, you have to make them realistic. So what I usually do is, let me open up a new map here, or even see if I can find one that's not worked on. Here we go, this one's empty. Cool. So we could actually work on this one because I need to fix it anyways. The first thing I do is I start with the template, for this one, I wanted the ruin, ruins, like a temple type thing where like it was man-made. So as you can see, all the boxes are boxy because it's man-made. Now, if I want to do something more like a castle, I mean not a castle, like a, a cave or something like that that's not man-made, that's when you will see the jagged edges because there, it's not man-made. Nature doesn't make straight lines. So if we go back to third kind of ruins, right? So after I make the, the shape, and again, usually the shape will be the same way you would make your building. I usually, depending on how deep the dungeon is, is how deep you would make the walls. 
right? This part, I don't really need to explain it, but pretty much simple, simple stuff. I put up the, the walls, the ceilings, and then the floors, right? After I do that, I add the details to my floors. Let me just go ahead and open this up like so. Okay, so after that, I add the details to my floors. So for example, if there's gonna be like any moss or any like these dark spots or stuff like that, if there's gonna be cracks some places, maybe over here, maybe over here. right anything that's a floor layer i always add that first because if you add the stuff that goes on top first then when you need to add the stuff that goes on the bottom layer is going to erase it if this was mz then you wouldn't need to do that because of the way the tile system works so after i put up all the floor stuff so let's use this room as an example because this technique applies to the whole map you just have to do it for the whole map cool after you put up the floor stuff then you move on to your war stuff, to your wall stuff, right? So I'm just going to put some of these. So floor walls, yeah, not the, not the stuff like, not, when I say floors, I don't mean stuff like, like these. Just stuff that you can walk over, like your floor stuff. And then your walls, this also counts as floor stuff. So let's go ahead and put some of these here, right? Some more walls. Let's put another control that there put some of this here put this here right so let's say this connects right and then after you do the walls you do the floors then you could start adding these so let's say well this isn't really um can't really add that because it's not a cave but we could add these so then you start adding these. So let's add this here, add this here. Actually, you know, add this one here. Mm, 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 mm. Maybe this one crumbled. I, I don't know, really know how to describe this. But you add the, the, the stuff that goes on the floor and the walls, if that makes sense. And then, uh, you know, as you're working, you might find that you need to add more of the floor and the walls. Do that again. It's just pretty much adding stuff floors first because once you put the floor stuff like for example let's say I want to come back and add this black stuff under this if I come back over here and do that it's gonna erase it right and then I have to come back over here now and we add this if I want to keep both of them right save yourself the problem I mean the trouble first do your floors do your walls and then do this and without that, that's pretty much it for the videos. The main takeaway from this video is when you're making your big open world maps, no matter how big they are, even if they're 500 by 500, even if you're making a 50 by 50 map, um, if you feel more comfortable working with a lower number, right? It's not, uh, I believe it's 13 by 17. It's the a, it's a smallest you can go, right? You could divide your map out by 13 by 17, zoom in if you're working on a 50 by 50 map. If you're working on a really big map, I wouldn't really recommend going anything lower than 25 by 25 or 50 by 50. But you can session these up by 25, 13 by whatever the lowest number is here and then build out your maps that way and then drag them all back into the 50 by 50 map. You have that option. So don't ever feel like you have to do everything at once you could segment it off and then make the maps more unique and more stuff like that but yeah without further ado thank you guys again for tuning in i hope you got some information from this video yeah make sure you hit that bell notification to be updated the next time i release a video and again i'm giving away don't haven keys for the for the person that leaves the most comment in the section below i think i'm giving away maybe four or five keys so please go ahead leave those comments below also have to be subscribed and like the videos appreciate it have a good day